Hey everybody, Jay from Realmsmith here. We've been getting some requests to post a tutorial on the bed build that we did recently for a D&D campaign that I'm running. I uh, just wanted to share it with you all. Thanks for uh, all the support and all the interest and uh, strap in, here we go. Well, first off, here's the uh, initial set of beds that we created. Um, we got a red and a green and blue. We did another red as well, um, but it seems like green has been the favorite of the colors um, on the forums that uh, that we've posted on. So we've decided for this uh, next tutorial build that we would um, focus on the uh, on the green bed again. And here we have uh, the tools that uh, we'll be needing for uh, today's build. A uh, simple brush, and this is just one of many brushes that I use. They're just cheap uh, craft brushes. Uh, utility knife, uh, just make sure it's sharp. Uh, a pair of pliers for uh, breaking apart uh, balsa wood pieces and craft wood pieces. Some cheap clippers from your local dollar store, uh, again for clipping uh, wood. A glue gun a uh, carving tool for uh, creating wood texture and of course there are some other uh, utensils obviously that you'll need uh, that you'll see throughout the the video here we have the uh, mattress uh, piece of foam core uh, that we use um, the first ones I, that I cut for the first set were a little long and so uh, what you can see me doing here is just shaving off that extra length uh, that we created uh, in the first set of builds. Um, this is just a cheap dollar store craft foam. I like the dark, the dark color because it just hides better. better. And I'm just uh, dry fitting here to make sure it's the right size. What I have here are, uh, again, dollar store wood sticks they're almost like stir sticks and even though they are wood i like to exaggerate the wood texture on it so what i'm doing is i'm dragging my carving tool um or sculpting tool rather uh, along the length of it to create wood grain uh, and i'm mixing up the angles and adding straight and curved lines to complete the effect and of course you want to do this for both sides And here I'm just taking chunks out of the corner edges of the uh, stir stick um, just to give it a bit more of a rough hewn look. Kind of hand cut wood that would be used for the uh, bed frame. Again, I do it on both sides. And then here I'm measuring the slats um, for the headboard and the footboard. Just making a mark on the top end, and then again on the bottom end, and then continuing that along the length of the stir stick. For this build, we'll need eight sections. And then I'm, here I'm uh, measuring out the length that will hold the slats in place for the footboard and for the headboard. And then I'm very carefully uh, and slowly clipping off the end piece and then cutting each section or each slat separately. And careful with these, they tend to fly across the table. You don't want to blind yourself or anybody else. Some of them tend to split, sometimes up the middle, but that's okay too. Just adds to the worn look. And 
here I'm adding a little bit of uh, just regular Elmer's school glue, white glue, to the one side of the lateral piece. And I'm just going to affix it to the back of the slats that I've already lined up at the bottom there. And then we're just going to let that dry. And here we're going to do the same thing that we did to the stir sticks with the doweling uh, that we picked up from uh, the dollar store as well. And we're just drawing long lateral texture marks. And be careful because it uh, tends to rotate a little bit and uh, slip. You want to watch that tool. But here we're just rough marking it up. There's no pattern to this. And then we're going to go ahead and measure the feet. And I'm just using my last bed as an example. But um, really, it's up to you how tall you want the, the legs to stand. And of course, we'll need four legs. Then I'm going to take my utility light knife here and I'm going to score the doweling along the, the marks that I've just made. And here we're not trying to cut all the way through, we're just trying to score it deep enough so that it'll snap easily with the use of the pliers. Then we're going to gently take our pliers and we're going to snap off each leg. Don't worry if it leaves grooves in the wood, it just looks like uh, beaten, worn damage to the, to the legs. Now this one wouldn't snap here. And so instead of cracking it up the middle, I decided to score it a little bit more. And there we go. And as you can see, the ends of the legs tend to be a little rough, so I just take my hobby knife and carefully and gently, watching your thumb, shave off that little excess. The rough ends on the legs look like, or make it look like the, the legs have been chopped. Again, hand cut. And here we have our mattress again. And we're just gonna put a bead of hot glue along the edge of it and quickly affix the headboard to the end of it. We're just gonna let it set for a minute and then we're gonna do the same on the other side with the footboard. It's always a challenge working with hot glue because it dries so quickly, but it's also the benefit of it as well. And I'm just clearing off all the little stringies. <laughs> stringies is a technical term that I use. <laughs> Here we're adding a bead of hot glue to each end of the uh, headboard and the footboard and uh, just affixing the legs, making sure they're kind of centered on the mattress as much as possible. And I found that in order to have a nice sturdy build, 
I'd have to go in afterwards and just add a little bit more glue in some corners where uh, the legs tended to wiggle a little bit. Now here's how we uh, create the sheet effect for the sheets in the pillowcase. So we take a piece of two-ply paper towel and we separate the two plies from each other. And with one of the plies, we rip off a little section, which creates a little thin sheet of paper towel. And then with some water, we'll wet that paper towel. There's a little bit of glue in there already. We don't have to worry about mixing too much glue into that water. And then we're going to pull out that paper towel and we're going to separate it. And straighten it out as much as possible. Once we've straightened it out, We're going to place it down and grab our bed so far, and we're going to add a little bit of white glue on the surface of it. And with our wet brush, we're just going to move that white glue around. Make sure that it covers the three surfaces, the top and the two sides. Once that's done, we're going to place the wet paper towel over the mattress, allowing for some folds to naturally form. We're going to stretch it across. And then we're going to take our paintbrush with some glue, and we're just going to push it into the corners and make sure that it sets right. In order to make our pillow, we're going to cut a thin strip of foam. This is just craft foam that you can find at a local art store, hobby store. We're just going to cut a little square, a rectangle, and we're going to fold it in half. And I just place a uh, thin bead of hot glue in the middle, folding it over, which creates the thickness that I wanted for the pillow. Pressing it together, letting it set. And when the hot glue is a little cool, but not completely dry, I wipe off the excess on the end. And 
There we go. Okay, I'm gonna take a little leftover paper towel, I rip off a little piece, and the same thing we did with the sheets, we're gonna create a pillowcase. What we're going to do now is just affix the pillow with a little bead of hot glue to the mattress. And now we're going to measure out the blanket size. Uh, this is kind of a guessing game, um, depending on how you want to lay the, the blanket down on the bed. I always make sure that I have a little bit extra because it's much harder to shrink it than it is to, to, to or sorry, to, to add more. You can always take away. What I'm doing is I'm just stretching out the foam, it thins it out, allows it to bend a little better. It also gives it a bit of more of a unnatural, or sorry, natural um, fold and crinkle to it. Makes it a little more, more wavy. And then taking that piece of foam, I'm gonna systematically place hot glue around the perimeter of the way that I wanted to lay. Here I'm just snipping off a little bit. As I said, it was a bit big and a little long. I'm just gonna dry fit it here. See how I'd like the folds to lay. Once again, a little too big. Another dry fit. Once I've got the size right, and I'm happy with the way that it sits, I'm gonna grab my hot glue, place some on the side, and then affix the blanket and let it set. Wipe off the excess. Remember to let the glue cool a little bit before you touch it. I've had that hard lesson many times. Once that's set, I'm going to go around 
the rest of the bed, placing hot glue one section at a time and affixing it to the mattress. And here's where it all starts to come together. What we have here is just a craft brand paint, uh, just a black that we're going to use just to uh, set down a base coat primer for the piece. And I'm just going to liberally cover the whole thing in, in this black paint. And now we're going to paint the base coat of the sheets with a golden brown color. Once again, just craft store dollar store paint. And what I like to do on all my builds is to paint from the inside out so that higher areas don't get covered by the paint that you're trying to 
get into the recesses. So right here, we're, we're going into the deepest areas of the bed and the sheets. And sorry, I'm a little off, uh, off screen there. I'll adjust in a second. There we go. So I'm just laying down a base coat on all the sheet area. And then here we're gonna add an antique white color for some highlights on the sheets. And as the first layer of antique white is drying, we're gonna add some raw umber for a rough base coat on the wood frame. Now for this, I prefer to uh, do a bit of a, uh, it's not really a dry brush, it's more of an overwash. But I'm not covering every nook and cranny, I'm letting the black show through a little bit, applying it in a rough style. And then we're going to use a little nut bank brown, which is just a lighter brown for the next coat on the wood frame. And this is going to be more of a dry brush. And so I'm going to take a little on my brush and then wipe off most of it on the paper towel. And then I'm just going to drag it along the surface so that you're starting to see that wood grain come through. At this stage, we're gonna use some oatmeal color. It's our highlight color for the bed frame. We're just gonna apply that to the very, very edges as a dry brush to make those final details and edges pop. And I wasn't too happy with the um, gray tinge to, uh, to the bed frame, so I'm gonna come back with some soft suede color, which is a bit more of a warm khaki color. I'm just adding a little dry brush just to uh, soften up that uh, oatmeal color. Now in order 
wanted to give the sheets an antique look. I've added some water to the nut mint brown. And I'm just gonna do a rough wash of a watered down brown color. I've chosen the nutmeg here just to let it seep into the Reese's. And by Reese's, I mean recesses. And then I'm gonna wipe off the excess with the paper towel here. And finally for the sheets and the pillow, we're gonna add antique white again and a final highlight. And this is a pretty stark, crisp white highlight. Once again, a little off screen there, I apologize for that. But this is gonna hit the uh, uppermost edges and just really lighten up the texture on the sheets and the pillow. Now onto the green, I used a hunter green for the base color. And the foam tends to, even though we've applied a, a black primer to the foam, it tends to really soak up color. So sometimes you need multiple coats for this, but we're just gonna do a base coat of the hunter green here on the blanket all around. And then finally, a last highlight of leaf green on the blanket. And here you just wanna make sure that you catch the edges and on the rounded edges, you can paint right along that line and then just soften it with your, with your finger there. you can see. And then what I'm doing on the, on the sharp edges, I'm just running the edge of the, of the brush along that edge to catch that highlight. And you just want to think about how the light would, would affect the surface and the folds in the fabric. And that's it. Thanks again for watching our tutorial and stay tuned for more from Realmsmith. And of course, be sure to subscribe and check us out at facebook.com slash dungeonscribe to see what else we're up to.